Hello everyone, so I am back with a very exciting unboxing today. This just arrived about an hour ago. This is the brand new Dyson V15 Detect uh, that just came out a couple days ago. Um, I ordered this from Best Buy and it just arrived. So in this video, we'll just be doing uh, an unboxing of it and a quick look at some of the features. Um, so let's go ahead and get right into it. I'll also have more tests, uh, more in-depth tests of this coming on my channel in the future. So let's go ahead and get right into the unboxing. We're just gonna cut these three pieces of tape here and get the box open. Okay, so as you can see right on the top here, as usual, we have some Dyson warranty stuff. Um, some regulatory, and I assume in this envelope is the instructional packet. Let's see, on this side, I've actually never seen this little QR code before. Yep, just telling us to register our machine. All right, and then right on top, you can see we've got two of our attachments here. Looks like our crevice tool and our combination tool. Now I did see online actually that Dyson um, was showing this new purple crevice tool with like lights on it that would turn on um, when you plugged it into the machine, but this does not appear to be that. So you may have to buy that separately. So this is just the regular plastic crevice tool with the red click on uh, fitment that we've seen with Dyson's before. And then here's our standard combination tool. This just slides like this so you can get your uh, crevice and your dusting brush and the same tool. Okay, and then this right here appears to be our wand wrapped in paper here. So let's just uh, open this cardboard here. There we go. And then we just unroll the paper. Ooh, yeah. And you can see our really nice, it's kind of a titanium finish wand there, which is really nice. And you can see it says Dyson V15 Detect right there. But this is pretty uh, standard for Dyson's. Again, with the same red click button tool fitment. And then it looks like we've got some of our heads over here. So this first one is the new fluffy head that is obviously a major part of this machine. So you can see right here, here's the fluffy head with the swivel action and then also the slider switch to turn on that laser detection right here that will show you hidden dirt and we will test that out. So there's that. We'll also compare this to the old style fluffy that I had from my uh, V10. Okay, and then this next head in here appears to be the torque drive head. Yep. And you can see, <laughs> they definitely put a lot of uh, advertisement on here that this has an anti-tangle comb. You can see that it says um, all over the brush roll, anti-tangle comb right here. And you can see along here, those red teeth that will actually comb hair off the brush roll. So there's this, and then it also has the three position adjustable gates on it as well, like so. So if you need to pick up larger debris on hard floors and you don't wanna use the fluffy, um, this doesn't do quite as good of a job, but you can open up those gates. And this obviously also does have the torque sensor in it. So based on what uh, flooring surface you're on, whether it's carpet or hard floor or something, it will adjust the suction of the machine accordingly. Okay. And then right here, I'm not sure what's in this box. Ah, this appears to be our charger. This is a standard Dyson charger. Actually doesn't have any, there we go. Yeah, it's really hard to read markings on there right there, but this plugs into the wall dock to charge it. Okay. Ah, so in this box, it appears we have some of our extra accessories. 
So this many of you will recognize as the stiff bristle brush. This has pretty stiff bristles on it for really getting stubborn dirt out. And then this is an entirely new tool that has uh, anti-tangle uh, hair technology, but it's different than that of the torque drive head. So this obviously has combs on it for getting the hair off, where this, um, you can see, is cone-shaped, and this brush roll actually will push the hair to the end, and then it will be sucked into the machine. So you can see this brush roll actually doesn't have a connection on this side, which is very interesting. So, And then you can see it's kind of corkscrew-shaped where the hair will just push itself to the end so it does not tangle. All right, and then this box right here. Looks like we've got a few more things. This appears to be our soft dusting brush. So this is the soft dusting brush with much softer bristles compared to the stiff bristle brush. So you can, you can almost hear <laughs> the difference there. So a good set of attachments. And then this is a uh, feature that came with the V11 as well. This will actually snap on to the wand so you can store um, attachments on the wand, which is nice. So you can have those ready for cleaning. All right, get that out of the way. And then I believe this is our last thing before the actual machine itself. But here is the uh, charging dock that you thread the charger through right in there. And then this appears to be a wall mount with some hardware so we can mount this to the wall. And then of course uh, this clips in there so you can mount your machine and charge it on the wall. So now we get to the main event. The V15 Detect. There we go. All right. And it appears that is it for the box. We just have some, uh, last thing is just some instructions for how to mount the charger to the wall. So let's get the box out of the way. And you can see here is the V15 Detect. will be very similar or very familiar to those of you who have used a V11, or a V10 for that matter. But we've got the nice kind of uh, yellow cyclones here, kind of burnt orange. Um, and then we do have a removable battery. So unlike the V11, but like the V11 outsize, the battery does have a red tab here, so it can just click into place, easily replaceable, and I can also carry a spare, which is nice. So we actually have a setup screen to go through on here. So let's go ahead and do that in detail. Okay, so as you can see, it's asking us to uh, select. And the way we do this, I believe, is we hold the button to select the language. So I'm gonna select English, just press and hold. Yep, three, two, one, and it selects English. And it is telling us to fully charge this before first use. We can obviously pull the trigger to get started here. Right on medium. And you can see the particle count coming up, which is pretty cool. But it's telling us to fully charge, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's just get this machine set up just a little bit to uh, get it charged. So we'll connect the wand right here. And I'll just go ahead and connect the uh, torque drive head. That's what I'm gonna use for now, but I will demonstrate the uh, fluffy tool for you. And then, if we'd like to, we can attach the tool clip and put two tools on here. So we could do crevice tool and say the combination tool or a crevice tool, and it doesn't look like the dusting brush would fit on there that well. Um, but, so for now we'll just do the uh, crevice tool and the combination tool. You can slide, that has got some rubber grips on it. So, all right, so the machine is all ready to go. And then for now, I'm not gonna worry about the wall mount. Um, I'm just gonna actually charge I'm just gonna actually charge the battery itself. There we are. 
and then we'll just take the battery off by pushing this button and taking the battery off right here, which is a great feature. And then you can see here is our uh, jack for the charger. Put that in and we'll go ahead and charge this up. I know it takes at least a couple hours and they do tell you to charge it fully before first use, so we'll do that. And then I will be back once we're charged up. Okay, so after about two and a half hours, we have the machine all charged up to 100% uh, as it specifies in the manual. So now we're just gonna give it a quick little test on carpet. This is using the torque drive head with the anti-tangle technology. And we're just gonna put it in auto mode. And also I will show you the particle count display as we start it. So this is the first run of the Dyson V15 Detect. And here we go. As you can see, it adjusts the uh, motor speed for the carpet that I'm on. Right there, you can see more in more detail than from the GoPro, but you can see 50.8 million particles greater than 10 microns, 399,000 particles greater than 60, and it's not labeled there, but greater than 180, and then 103 particles greater than 500 microns. So, very interesting, and you can also select here, so if I want to put it in boost mode... And that, as you can see, actually is too much suction for this carpet. It seals right down. So as also you can see, there's our estimated runtime right there. And as we switch modes, it does update that as well. So we can also put it in eco mode, which is more of a, uh, makes the battery last a lot longer. That's how you would get the 60 minute runtime. So that's um, the uh, anti-tangle torque drive head. And as you can see, there is indeed no hair wrap on there, so it is working. It's actually a little bit difficult to push on this carpet, so I may end up opening up the gates a little bit, but there's that. And then the one that, the head that you would really like to see, the uh, fluffy, we're gonna do that next, but I also just wanted to try, I have my old attachments from my V10. This will be familiar to many of you the standard Dyson motor head here. I just wanna see if this will work. So we've got that hooked up to the V15. So let's give that a try. Yep. So that head does work perfectly well. There's no issues with that at all. Obviously you won't have the torque sensing or the anti-tangle features you would have with this head, but that works just fine. And then before we give the soft roller a try, let's try this anti-tangle uh, tool here. Now I do like this tool because it does have its own motor rather than being a turbo brush. But here we go. So I don't have any artificial hair uh, to test this tool with, but <laughs> I've got the next best thing I could find. I have some yarn. So I'm actually gonna do um, a slow-mo recording so we can see how this tool actually manages to push hair to the end of the brush roll, very interesting. So here we go. We're just gonna stretch out the yarn. It's about, mm, I'd say about three feet here. And 
and let's see how this tool does. That was very impressive. So you can see the entire piece of yarn made it into the bin and nothing, obviously yarn's gonna be a little bit easier than hair, but you get the idea of the principle. Nothing ended up in the brush roll. So let's try that so you can see it from the bottom. Let's try that in slow-mo so we can uh, take this tool off. And you can see just from vacuuming a little bit, I've already got a nice little dust bunny there, which is shows good performance there. Not necessarily, but I did just vacuum this carpet about an hour ago, so. All right, so let's try it from the bottom here and try this in slow-mo. So basically, I'm just gonna feed it into the brush roll, but here we go. So incredibly quickly, it just sends it right to the end of the brush where it's not connected to anything. And again, sucked right up. <laughs> you can actually see it's wrapped around the shroud there, but made it all the way into the bin and no hair wrap. So very impressive. Okay, so I wanted to test this head um, in my basement. You can see I've got my GoPro there to give you guys a different angle and we're actually using it. But I wanted to test the head in the basement for one, these concrete floors I know can get very dusty sometimes and it's very dark down here so we can see the light a little bit better. We just have some natural light from some windows over there uh, behind the camera. But let's go ahead and give this fluffy head its first test and see how this light technology works. So that's pretty interesting. So the ads definitely are a little bit deceptive in that they show a ton of particles. And I'm sure you could see both from the phone view and the GoPro view that there weren't a lot of visible particles. And as you can see from the uh, particle count here, most of the particles here are the about 10 micron size there, 326 million of them, and very few large particles. But you could certainly see some of them. I will give them that, but it's definitely uh, deceptive compared to the ads because as you can see when you turn on, there's definitely not a lot of particles there. It's mostly just showing a clean floor. But I'm sure if it was if it was a more dirty floor, it definitely seemed to show the particles that were there relatively well. And I also just want to try and also compare the new fluffy head to this old fluffy head for my V10. So you can see the first thing I noticed is that the uh, diameter of the brush, or I guess the fluffy part, is much smaller on the new one compared to the old one. So here's the new one, and I didn't quite, wasn't able to see this in their ads, but here's the new one with that green plastic to kind of highlight the laser feature there. And then here, if I can hold them both at the same time, is the old one. So you can see that significant size difference. And from what I can tell, I will have tests later on my channel about this, but this one also seems to spin faster. I'll do a brush roll speed test of this later, but um, Definitely a different design choice. Much smaller, fluffy head there. And also, you can see, this fluffy head has a roller the entire, or well, most of the width of it, where this one only has two smaller ones back there, two sort of velvety coated wheels. 
So that's pretty interesting, the comparison between those two heads. Okay, so we've got the V15 Detect on my airflow box, as you can see. And we're gonna do three different tests um, on low, the auto speed, and boost. Um, low is actually called eco mode, but um, just to see what kind of measurements we can get, and especially to compare it to what the other Dysons get. Uh, the outsize, I think, has been the highest Dyson thus far, around 58 CFM. But let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start out on low speed. you can see we're at 29.92 or about 30 CFM. So that mode will obviously give the longest battery life at around 60 minutes with the cleaner head attached. Um, so next we're going to switch over to the auto mode. Now one note about this, since this head is not on any sort of carpet, it's just attached so the airflow can flow through my anemometer vein right there. Um, this isn't going to be as high as it might be on some carpets. Um, because there's no resistance, so it's probably going to think it's on bare floor or something. But we'll give it a try anyway. Let's try auto mode. So here we go. We'll switch it over to auto, and here we go. just over a 5 CFM increase up to 35.17 and like I said that probably would be higher on carpet um, but for this test there's no real way to test the airflow well through a carpet that's an entirely different measurement so um, 35.17 and then the measurement that we'll be interested in here on boost mode this gives around a little less than 10 minutes of runtime in my experience um, but this should be the highest value so let's switch over to boost mode and see what we can pull and away we go. So pretty much exactly 60 CFM, 59.97 as you can see there, which um, I believe Dyson claimed this had a small increase in performance compared to the outsize, uh, or the V11 outsize, which was 58 CFM, I believe, from what I've seen, uh, from where I've seen it tested. So that does jive, you know, about a 2 CFM increase, uh, does jive with the measurements that Dyson quoted. Um, so about 60 CFM on boost mode. Um, so finally, let's do our normal suction test at the nozzle and a brush roll speed test. Okay, so here we go with our nozzle suction test. We're going to start on low speed. And this is going to be a little bit difficult because I have to hold the trigger um, and uh, put the suction gauge up, but I'm going to try. So we'll put it on eco mode here. There we go. So that looks like about 14 inches of lift from the nozzle. Next, let's go ahead and do auto. Okay, so we're on auto. Here we go. And 
that looked like about 23 inches, so a small increase. And then finally, let's see what we can get on boost. So here we go. Oh, wow. So that is actually some of the best nozzle suction that I measured on any vacuum, corded or cordless, but right about 80 or 81 inches of water lift at the nozzle, which is very, very impressive. But again, that's in boost mode where the runtime is severely limited. So for our final test, let's go ahead and do a brush roll speed test. Okay, so we've got the V15 lying in its front here. And I thought we were going to have to do more than one brush roll speed measurement for this test, um, but I did some preliminary testing, and the brush roll actually seems to be spinning at the same speed for uh, pretty much all of these, uh, all the different modes, whether it's auto, boost, or eco. So we're just going to do one test here to see what that can get. So I'm going to adjust the camera here just so we can get the best reading of the tachometer. And we do have our reflective piece of tape right there on the brush roll, which will be read by the tachometer. And so we are all set to go. I'll just be putting this in auto mode, but like I said, the reading is basically the same no matter what, no matter what mode it's in. <laughs> So it seemed to peak right around 4,075, which for a corded upright would be definitely on the low side, um, but should be adequate for what this machine is for. So about 4,075 RPM. And I just want to do one last test because I did mention my theory that the old fluffy spins faster than the new fluffy. So I want to actually test that out. So let's see which one spins faster. Okay, so we've got the old fluffy hooked up first. And you can see it was a little bit difficult, but I pushed the reflective tape on there, so we're all good. And let's see what this can get. Like I said, I did do some pre-testing, and all of these brush rolls spin the exact same speed for the most part. The exact same speed, no matter what the power setting is. So we'll just be doing this in auto mode. But here we go. <laughs> So that is a very slow brush roll indeed, only about 1200 or so RPM, maybe peaking at 1210. Um, so definitely a slow brush roll, but I understand that for hard floor use, you would want that. So let's go ahead now for our final test of this video and switch uh, to the new fluffy head and see what kind of difference that makes. Okay, so we got the new fluffy hooked up here and got the piece of tape put on there for the tachometer to read. So let's see if my hypothesis was true that this spins slower than the old Fluffy. Here we go. <laughs>
So it looks like uh, at its peak, it was right around 1190, but hovering right around 1180. So 20 to 30 RPM slower, which really is not a huge difference, actually. So it is slower than the old Fluffy, but um, they're pretty much the same, both of these brush rolls. So now that we are done with all of our tests, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the measurements that we collected for this brand new V15 Detect. So here are all the measurements that we took for this Dyson V15 Detect. Um, and as you can see, I did add two more measurements, um, airflow at inlet and suction at inlet. So that's just right at the motor unit there. Um, and so those would just be for like attachment cleaning. Those would be relevant for that. Um, but starting off with the airflow uh, from the nozzle, um, obviously in boost mode, 60 CFM is pretty impressive for a cordless machine, but in boost mode, the, the uh, battery life being just around 10 minutes, it's not going to be that feasible for most people, but it's also really hard to push on any sort of thick carpet uh, in boost mode. So I would highly recommend using it in auto or eco mode, but obviously the airflow is significantly less. Um, but you can see in the airflow density column, the uh, opening of the nozzle is about 22 square inches, which is decently large for a cordless machine, actually. Um, but even on boost mode, it's still less than a 3 in airflow density. So it's really not uh, because of the airflow density that it's difficult to push in boost mode. It's because of the super high nozzle suction, the highest I've ever measured of 80 inches of lift. Of course, that's not really that relevant for cleaning, um, but it still really sucks down to carpets when you use boost mode. But um, in the other two modes, auto and eco, um, the nozzle suction is perfect for cleaning carpets. It's really easy to push, um, but the CFM density and the overall CFM are lower, so you have to take that into account. But boost mode is great for just stubborn messes that you have to clean. Um, and then the airflow at the inlet and suction there, you can see the values are a little bit higher than the values from the nozzle, um, but actually not that higher you can see like airflow at the inlet and boost mode is about 67 cfm and it's about 60 cfm in boost mode from the nozzle so only about a you know seven or so cfm loss uh going down the wand and through the nozzle so it's definitely sealed well um and then obviously suction at the inlet in, in boost mode is way off the charts at 112 inches um and then of course in auto and eco it's generally okay 54 and 35 there and I did put the brush roll speed measurements at the bottom of the screen, as you can see. Um, the torque drive, the carpet brush roll basically getting just over 4,000 RPM, about 4,080. Like I said, that's generally on the low end of vacuums. Um, but I was just remembering my Kirby Avalier 2 got about 4,100. So that's a pretty decent measurement, actually, for a cordless machine, definitely. And then the fluffy brush rolls obviously spin much slower, but they're pretty much the same. The old one is about 20 RPM fast but 1190 RPM for the new one and 1210 for the old one. So that is pretty much it for this video. Um, please, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or critiques, please leave those down below. Um, thank you so much for watching as always, and be sure to click subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when I post a new video of either this V15 or any of the other vacuums in my collection. And thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again in the next one.